Okay, so today we are going to do something a little bit unusual. So last night I did a group flight with Virtual Flight Online. Uh, the Christmas flight, as I titled it. So we are visiting somewhere on the coast of Turkey and all will be revealed when we get there. We're going to repeat the flight. But instead of doing it in a general aviation plane, we're going to use the CRJ. Uh, primarily because it's quite fast. So we're going to be at low level. So we'll be flying 250 knots all the way, but should make quite an interesting flight and we'll get to see some beautiful scenery along the way. Okay, so first things first, let's go and have a look in the simulator. We want to make this look pretty during our flight, so let's go and find out where sunset starts to happen. So if we were to take off at yeah, 4 o'clock or half past 4, we'll be getting sunset along the way. And we're also going to go on the weather to make it look a bit pretty along the way. Instead of going for live weather, we'll go for scattered clouds, which would give us some nice shadows as we fly. OK, so we're in the CRJ. So first things first, turn the batteries on. It's going to be quite interesting because we're not going to have to bother with putting a flight plan in because we'll just refer to a little nav map along the way and um we'll just fly you know vectors throughout the route so uh the irs system is on um we can go back overhead we can turn on the apu is it going to switch on yet we had to open the door first didn't we i did that the wrong way around should we go and check outside see if anything's happening the door has opened Oh, it's starting now. Good. Uh, what happens next in the CRJ? We can turn the fuel pumps on. And we're waiting for the APU to come up. It takes a few moments usually while we're doing that. It's not tremendously accurate in the this Aerosoft version of the CRJ. You can go and turn things, lots of things on out of order. It really doesn't matter too much. So we can see all sorts of things are coming up here. We can see whether the um, APU is actually generating electricity yet. If we press electricity here, we can see the numbers will come up here. And as soon as we've got that, we can um, go and start the engines usually. OK, so it's all looking good. So we're going to take the throttles off of idle, which is a little bit fiddly sometimes. So we can prove that. We've got movement on the throttles, that's good. So we go back overhead and we'll start the engines. We're doing these out of order. Normally you'd be pushed back before you start the engines, but we're not following procedures. We're just starting the plane up quickly. So we're now waiting for the engines to come up. You see that happening here. We can start moving the flaps while we're doing that. Again, we're proving here that the CRJ really isn't realistic. The, the order we're doing in thing, things in, we shouldn't be able to move flaps before the engines are running because the hydraulics shouldn't be running properly. There's all sorts of things wrong. Anyway. We will go and put, do the position initialization in the cockpit because that kind of makes sense to do. We're not going to bother putting a flight plan in, as I mentioned. So now it's giving us the usual warnings about the window heating, which we go and switch on over here. As soon as the engines are fully up and running, you'll see the aircon lights come on over here, warning us. There they go. So we can go and do those. We can turn on the air recycling as well. And because the engines are now running, we can stop the APU, close the hatch on it as well. And we're probably pretty good. What's it complaining now? Your damper, Mac trim and stab trim. They're down on the central console. So your dampers are one and two. Stab trim is channel one, channel two. And the Mac trim, switch it on. And all the warnings have disappeared, which is excellent. OK, we need to go and arm the nose wheel steering. We also need to turn on the tablet to remove the chocks from the wheels. 
So we go into the aircraft tab of the tablet and we remove the wheel chocks. And now we are ready to go and do our VFR flight in the CRJ. If we go and have a quick look outside, you can see the engines are now up and running. Making lots of noise and lots of heat pouring out of the back of them. Uh, we're going to press Shift and P to do the pushback. We'll wait until the truck is engaged and then we will release the parking brake and he will start pushing us back. But of course, this is Flight Simulator, so he'll start trying to push us back with the brakes on rather than ask us to remove them. In a normal airport setting, you would um, get the truck hooked up. They would then ask you to release the wheel brakes and then once you're moving they would give you clearance to start the engines while you're being pushed back. Okay, so we'll release the wheel brakes. Let's have a look outside to see where we are. We're going to need to taxi around here to get onto the runway to begin our flight. So we're just waiting for us to get some clearance from the other aircraft before we release the truck and taxi round to the runway. We're going to see some lovely scenery along the way. We're going to head off down a valley over to our west. Again, it's just good fun to do it in the CRJ because it's that bit quicker than a generally avia general aviation aircraft. Okay, that probably gives us enough room to turn. So let's get ourselves straight in the cockpit. A small amount of thrust, full deflection on the nose wheel steering to clear the, the tug. Outside while we're taxiing. Make it a bit more interesting for you. See some of these other aircraft at the gates. Okay, so while we're taxiing, we can busy ourselves, if I can multitask long enough, with programming the MCP, the master control panel for the autopilot. So we can see our heading is moving down here. So we actually want that on 180. To reflect the, the direction we're going to be taking off. Um, we will change our target altitude to 5,000 feet. set our vertical speed for initial climb out to two and a half thousand feet. So we're going for a vertical speed climb at two and a half thousand feet to five thousand feet. We are going to manage the speed by hand because that's the way you do it in the CRJ, it has a Fardex throttle system, it has an electronic throttle system. But it essentially means you're you're in control of the aircraft yourself. There is although there is a speed mode for ascent and descent. It's um I'm not gonna get into it today. For anybody that's not experienced with aviation, it's just gonna do your head in trying to explain how speed mode works. So we're just going to fly vectors today. In fact, we could hand fly the entire journey, to be honest. Break all aviation laws and just fly, you know, a couple of thousand feet all the way. 250 knots and have fun. 
So we're not going to need the whole runway, so I'm going to cut sh cut onto the runway at the next entry point, which is just coming up. So let's do that. Okay, there's no other aircraft around that I'm aware of, so we're going to pull straight out onto the runway. We're not using ATC today, this is purely a sightseeing trip really. And to recount the Christmas flight we did with Virtual Flight Online with a bit faster aircraft. Okay, increasing throttles gently up to maximum throttle. Airspeed is increasing, so ground speed is increasing, 120 knots. 140 knots and rotate. And we're airborne. Gear up. Flaps up. Keep an eye on the airspeed. A little bit of forward trim. Okay, so we're going to do an immediate Hello, right rain. turn. Just approaching 250 knots, so I've arrested the throttle to stop our acceleration. So directly in front of us, across the bay here at Antalya, you can see the entrance into a wide valley. So we're going to follow that. It's not going to take long to get here in this aircraft. The speed is creeping up, so I'm going to keep us at about 250 knots all the way if I can. So out to the right, we can see Antalya, this big city. Look outside, you can see the airfield disappearing behind us. Sink rate. We are descending, so I'm going to stop that from happening. There we go. And we're just going to have some fun flying along the route through the mountains. Did this last night at about 100 knots all the way, so we're going to get there roughly twice as quickly. So we should have the whole flight done in about, an, oh, about half an hour to three quarters of an hour. I'm going to bank on about half an hour because I'm not going to be circling, looking at things too much. And we're certainly not stopping midway on the flight as we did last night. So we're going to fly down, let's go and have a look at the map to see where we're going. So we're heading for this mountain range just to the west of Antalya. And we're going to go south through the mountains. And then visit a small town called Demra on the coast. Then fly along, we're not going to land at Castellaritzo. But we'll certainly have a look at it as we fly past low. And then we'll fly up, it looks like a glacial valley to the southeast of Fetier, and then turn left over the top of Fetier, have a look at Fetier as we go past, and then go and land at Dalaman. Okay, so we have arrived at the mountains while we were looking at the map. So we're turning into the mountain range. I'm just going to try and get a free hand for a second. So let's lift the nose so I can drag the, ma drag the map across. So you can see we are entering the mountain range I spoke Too about. So this, these are the mountains to the west Too of Antalya. And we're going to pick our way through them, flying quite low. So we'll probably get all sorts of warnings from the flight control system. We're going to increase our speed because we're increasing altitude as we come terrain. through. Too low terrain. We've been busy bleeding off speed for the last couple of minutes. Too 
low terrain. So we're going to make a left turn in a moment and go Good down this valley terrain. that's ahead of us. Pull up. Yeah, we're getting warnings because the radar Good altimeter, which is the green number you can see under here, is obviously showing some Good very low altitudes. Terrain. Just to prove that, we'll just skim over the top of some Good of these terrain. ridges. And you can see the green number reducing. 400 feet, 300 feet, 250 oh, feet, up. and yeah, you get the warnings. Too low terrain. It doesn't like it. So let's go and fall down into this valley. 500. Pull up. Too low terrain. So these are Too the mountains of Turkey. It's a wonderful place to go exploring on flights. Too it's very rich terrain. history as well. So a lot of these settlements were Greek Too originally. But the, the Greek people left. There's quite a checkered history. I'm not going to get into it during Too this flight. But you can go and read about it on the internet. About what happened to the, the Greek Too people that terrain. lived in this part of Turkey. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Okay, let's climb out of here a little. Too low terrain. Just increasing the throttle. If we sit up in the seat, we can actually see down over the nose. See what's going past below. Look outside, you can see some amazing scenery around here. I'm certainly getting here much more quickly than I did on the, the group flight last night. So let's have a quick check of the map. So we're about to turn a bit further south. So we fly out towards the ocean and then we follow the coast around to Demra. Terrain. So if we go and have a quick check, I'll just get the nose trimmed slightly. So yeah, we follow the hills down to the coast, follow along to Demra, then go and have a look at Castellarizzo, then follow up this glacial valley, or it appears to be a great glacial valley, around to Fetier and then into Dalaman. So should we go and fly this valley in the CRJ, see how well it handles it? Thank we'll you. certainly do it until we get annoyed with it. Pull up. So we're down to up to 300 knots, and we're not in a military jet, Pull so we'd up. get into all sorts of trouble for this. Sink rate. Commercial aircraft are not allowed above 250 knots unless given express permission by air traffic control when they're below 10,000 feet typically. Sink rate. Sink rate. Sink this does rate. have air brakes though, so I can, if I choose to, can dump the air brakes, which I've just done. Sink rate. 1, you can see the speed is bleeding off. Sink rate. Lift the airbrex again. Or close the airbrex, I should say. Pull up. One thousand. Should go into this valley. Airbrex back on. Sink Let's go into rate. this valley and scare the life out of people. Five hundred. 
400, 300. Pull up. 500, 400. Pull up. Sink rate. 300. Sink rate. Let's climb back out of here. So we actually get to see some scenery. So we're going to toga on the throttle. Climbing out 20 degrees on the nose. If we look out the side. Look out over the nose. We can see the bay. See where we are. So the sun is just starting to come down. So we should get some nice views of the, the sunset along the way as we come along the coast towards Demra. Level us out, so we're still climbing. We're up at 6,000 feet now. It's looking good. Okay, let's cut the engines. Throw the air brakes out and we will descend down towards Demra. Hopefully we'll clear the bank of cloud in time to see it on our out of the um, starboard window. 5,000 feet coming up. Here we go. Perfect. Look at that. So, what is the significance of Demra? In the centre of Demra, there is a church. 
and underneath the church the the church is an ancient church and underneath it is the tomb of Saint Nicholas Nicholas of Bari and it doesn't take a genius to figure out Saint Nicholas is the origin of the Santa Claus Christmas uh, legend would you call it Saint Ray. The, the story of Saint Nicholas starts here Saint Ray. with Nicholas of Bari who was renowned for his Saint random Ray. giving of gifts so if we are careful and we look on the map of where we are Saint Ray. Waypoint 3 is exactly in the position of the church, so we're going to fly over and see if we can spot it. map we're going to fly right there it is we're flying right over it there's the church unfortunately it's not modeled in flight simulator but you can see it plainly on the ground okay so this this is demra demra is also famous again it's not modeled but there are ancient dwellings in the hillsides carved into the rock if you search Demre on the internet, D-E-M-R-E, in southern Turkey, you will see the, the dwellings. Okay, so we're going to carry on on our way now. Coming up to 250 knots, and level out, and give some elevator trim to level the nose up. So, having done our diversion at Demra, we're going to fly on, skirt around the edge of Castellaritzo, which is a great fun airport to land at with general aviation aircraft. You'll see why when we get there. And then we're going to skim up the valley, across Fetier and into Dalaman, which will be the next few minutes of the flight. We may even get some evening lights of the streets, street lights switching on in Fetier, which would be quite cool. Looks like we've timed it just about right. It's amazing scenery, isn't it? Again, the radar altimeter is seeing the ground underneath us and having a fit about it. So if you look carefully at this, there's a whole string of islands and then Castellarizzo is off to our right. So Castellarizzo is the island out over there, just past the end of this hip, these islands we're flying over. Notice you can't see an airstrip on it. It's hidden from this direction by the land. As we fly past, we'll look out over the window. So I'll fly on the the right side of the island, and we'll look out of the left window as we go past, and you will see the airfield that's on Castellarizzo. So it looks like the cloud base is about two and a half thousand feet. So that's good to know. We'll stay below that. a bit fast. I'm just going to cut the engines. Drop back to 250 knots. Okay, so if we look on the map, we're just approaching in between the mainland and the island for Castellarizzo. 
and we will see the airfield as we pass by. It's quite an interesting one. Certainly good fun to land there. I don't think I'd want to try and land the, um, the CRJ there. I think the landing roll would be far too long. You never know. Pull up. Terrain. Pull up. So yeah, the only reason we're getting warnings, obviously, is because this land underneath us is rising up away from the ocean and setting off the radar altimeter. Here comes Castel of it, so see even this close you still can't see the runway. It's really hidden behind this ridge. Yeah, start to see it, look. It's amazing how hidden it is from the mainland. There we go. Uh, and you can see there how short the runway is. So it's, um, it's a fun one to land at. Okay. Let's start our run in towards 38. So let's zoom the map back out. So if you remember I mentioned there's like a glacial valley. I guess to speed this part of the trip up we could climb, couldn't we? Let's Max throttle. Let's get up to 10,000 feet and then we can go past 250 knots. So climbing through the clouds. The sun's actually quite a way away from sunset, so we might get there. We might get to Dalaman in daylight hours. It might not be too bad after all. and a half thousand feet. Nine thousand feet. Nine and a half. Starting to level out. And we're coming through ten thousand feet. So now we can safely level out and accelerate. And you get a lovely view from up here of the valley. Ten and a half thousand feet. Just trimming the aircraft so it's not climbing too much, but obviously as it accelerates it generates more lift and tries to climb again, so we're just stabilizing that. But we're, you can see we're accelerating very quickly, so we're gonna pull the engine back now. Is the air aircraft is doing 330 knots without even trying. Can you get some of it from outside? Beautiful part of the world. Is 
sunset. You get the postcard photograph of the CRJ in between the cloud layers. And we're overspeeding. Trademark for one of my flights. Have to overspeed at least somewhere. Just chopping the engine back. Okay, so we're zooming off up towards waypoint number six on our flight plan, our very loosely put together flight plan. Just following this very broad valley or floodplain. And we will start descending back down in a moment. We're almost up to 14,000 feet. Let's cut the engines back and start descending as we go. So Dalaman's out over there somewhere. We're going to fly in over the top of 38. across the bay into Dalaman. We'll pick up the ILS at Dalaman and fly in manually on it. So we need to lose some speed before we get below 10,000 feet. So let's drop the air brakes and you will see the speed come tumbling off hopefully. 280 knots, 270 knots. Do 50 knots just as we come through 10,000, which is great. See, we're making the turn. Increase the turn rate slightly. And you'll see in the flat of the valley down here, Fetier stretched out across the, the bay. And here it comes. to 8,000 feet. We can afford to descend a bit faster. Coming down through the cloud. We'll level out at about 3,000 feet, I guess. So, we're looking good. Just debating which direction to come into Dalaman from. It's a crosswind landing, so it doesn't really matter. I guess we could come in from the ocean side, then we get to actually see the city ahead of us. Which would be quite cool. Just going to descend a little bit further to get below this cloud so we get to see Fetier. So there appears to be a canal through the middle of the, the city leading to the ocean.
Okay. So we want to be heading about 260, 250 degrees to go and join the ILS for Dalaman Air for Airport. And so we're just going to level up, trim the aircraft out so it doesn't descend too much. We're going a little bit slow. A little bit lower than we want it to be. Okay, let's go and have a quick look at the map. So, Dalaman. 110.1010 10 degrees. So, we go and look on the aircraft. We change the course. Oh, we need to go and change the nav source to VOR1. So we want 110.10. So we come down here, go to the radio section, 110.10. We put that into nav 1. We change the course to 10 degrees. And, whoops. There it goes. So this instrument is now reflecting where the runway is. So it's obviously pointing that way over to our which makes sense look from where we are the the runway is pointing to to the right of us by more than 90 degrees deflection from our point of from our heading i should say and this is going to be fun we are going to need the instruments and i don't want to get much lower because there's hills out here i guess we could fly around them Yeah, just for safety's sake, because we're getting a bit high anyway. I'm going to come back down. And while we're flying out towards these hills, I'm just going to check the altitude of Dalaman. Elevation 15 feet. Okay, so yes, we are getting very high. We're up to 5,000 feet again almost. So we're basically doing a dog leg out across the bay, around the islands, and then back into the ILS and into Dalaman. We're down to 180 knots. We want to be gently descending now down to 3000 really. Let's just trim the aircraft down. Give ourselves a fighting chance of making this. As you can see we're about to come around the island. As soon as we do come past this island, we're going to turn right and intercept the ILS. So let's cut the engines and start descending. We could actually put the wheels down. No, we're not going too fast. And we can sit in our normal position, and we can say, put the landing lights on please, that one, that one, and that one. Going to drop the flaps to their first position, which has given us a maximum speed of 220 knots now on the... Compass and Great. just dropping down under this cloud through this gap here, which is fine, holding 180 knots, coming down towards 3,000 feet, turning gently towards the airfield. If we were to look out over here and look, there you can see the runway. So it's going to sit in a normal position. You can see if we look carefully here, we are above the glide slope and we're going to help ourselves now with a special trick the CRJ has. 
which not many aircraft do have. So you can see the glide slope here, you can see the compass rose with our position relative to it there. You can see our speed over here on the ribbon, you can see our altitude dropping. So we're coming towards the, the diamond on the vertical part of the ILS and we're going to start turning. Going for the next level of flaps. Flying in manually, doing things methodically One and slowly. Next level of flaps. Master Caution, it's just warning us about the flaps. And you can see we've actually got a velocity vector on the HUD that's showing up. It's not tremendously accurate in Flight Sim. Falling below the glide slope. The CRJ can come in incredibly slowly. One hundred. Glide slope. Glide slope. Yeah, it's warning that we're below the glide slope, but then 40. we're too close now anyway. Thirty. So cut the engines. Twenty. Ten. And we're down. Brakes on. Flaps up <laughs> and we're rolling. Wait for the first exit to the left and then we can go over towards the terminal buildings. And things may have looked a bit exaggerated when we landed, it was because I was zoomed in so you could see the head up display. In reality, you know, we were sent quite a way further away. Okay, so there you go. A flight from Antalya over to some of the um, coastal towns. And then a landing, a VFR or visual landing into Dalaman on the coast of Turkey. It's a very picturesque place to fly. If you've not flown around this area before, it's well worth a visit. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop. So we're going to go and just quickly zoom round following the lines and then going to shortcut this corner completely let's have a look from outside, where's the line to get onto this terminal here Okay, there we go. Flight is complete. And we survived. Hurrah.
And there's the CRJ parked up at Dalaman Airport in southern Turkey. Um, if you would like to come and fly online with me, I'm usually flying at least once a week on Sunday evenings with virtualflight.online. Otherwise, um, I'll see you around soon. Okay, take care, bye.